Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my mid-year check-in for my makeup inventory. This is the first time that I've ever decided to do a mid-year check-in. This has generally been a annual kind of practice for me. So I did it back in 2019 and in 2020, towards the end of the year in November. So if you're interested in seeing some comparisons of what my collection was looking like back then when I first started doing this, I definitely recommend that you check out the playlist, which I'll link in the end part of this video and I'll have it down in the description box so you can see the way that my makeup collection has grown and changed throughout the years. However, I am just gonna be sharing with you photos of what my collection is currently looking like. And I'm gonna tell you the numbers that I had back in November, so about seven months ago, so that we can kind of just see where I'm at and kind of reflect on what I've used up, things that have come into my collection, all that kind of stuff. So I am really looking forward to sharing with you some of these numbers. Some of them have gone up, some have gone down, some have remained exactly the same even since 2019. So let's just hop on into it. So let's kick off this inventory with face primers. Back in the end of 2020, I had 13 face primers. I have since decluttered and used up a few of them. And now that we're in the middle of 2021, I have 10 primers and I'm really happy with that number. I have decided not to set goal numbers for my collection because my needs and wants with makeup do change so all over the place and really inconsistently. So I don't like setting goal numbers but I think 10 is a really great number to keep my primer collection at. I did declutter, I believe two since my like end of the year check-in last year. And then I've actually brought in, I believe only one, but I've used up a couple of my minis. So this is good. I'm happy with 10. I don't want to really see this category exceed 10. That feels like a really good spot to have a balance of different textures, finishes, things that offer different, um, you know, looks to my skin depending on what I need and what I want that day, but 10 is just definitely that number that I think is the sweet spot for me. I don't want to exceed that. So I can see myself being able to go a little bit below that in the very near future because I'm almost, almost done with my Urban Decay Optical Illusion Primer. And then I have one of those Milk Hydro Grip little sample packets that would only take me a handful of uses to get used up. The next category that I have is tinted moisturizer. When I did my check-in or like my very first makeup inventory rather at the end of 2019, I was like, I can see this number going up. I don't mind. It could grow exponentially. So it was actually at three back in 2019. It was also at three in 2020 and we're sitting at actually only one tinted moisturizer right now, which is something that I never would have imagined. I actually definitely thought that I would go up in my numbers with tinted moisturizers, but I have currently put myself on a no buy for tinted moisturizers and foundations, any kind of base products I'm on a no buy for. Even though I finished up two of my tinted moisturizers, I've not yet replaced those with anything else. And I don't intend to do that even before I do my end of the year check-in, possibly. I might end up bringing one more in at the end, like in November and then check in at the beginning of December. But yeah, only one, it's the ColourPop Tinted Moisturizer, the pretty fresh one. And I really do like that. However, the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue, as you know, is my absolute favorite, but I finished off both of them from my collection. Ugh, it, it's kind of hard to not go back and just immediately repurchase that, but with my foundations, I wanna get that number down. So that's the reason why I've done that. So speaking of foundations, why don't we just talk about that category now? So when I checked in at the end of last year, I had five foundations. I was really happy with that number. I could actually honestly see that number going down for me and it wouldn't be an issue because I just prefer tinted moisturizers these days. But somehow this like situation has flipped and I've actually increased that number. So now we're looking at eight foundations in my collection. That's still not an unreasonable number. Like I think that eight is okay. I'm not upset about that number. However, I don't really think that it makes sense for me and the way that I currently consume makeup. So I did end up getting two foundations in PR. I can't recall. Oh, and one other one is actually just a sample that I only recently got. It was a coupon code from Sephora. And I was like, oh, I'm, 
I've tried that. So <laughs> I ended up picking that up as well. So that's why we're at eight. So one is just a mini and two are brand new ones that I've gotten within the last few months in PR. Uh, not particularly ideal. And this is the reason why I've decided that I am on a base product no buy is because I can mix those foundations with primers or with moisturizer to just make them into my own custom tinted moisturizers. Today, that's how I've uh, done my base. I mix the Milani primer that I have, the Prime Light, with the Smashbox foundation that I have. And so that's how I'm going to keep using the foundations that I own and keeping my number of tinted moisturizers down to just one is I need to, I need to work my way through some of those foundations. I'd like to see that number, honestly, it could be at like three or four and I'd be fine and then have the reverse have my tinted moisturizers at something like five or six and that would be the perfect kind of proportion for me but that's not, not the case right now and it's probably not going to be the case for quite some time. I'm very slow at using up foundations so yeah unfortunately that number has gone up. So the next category I have is concealers. I also lump in my color correctors with that category. And at the end of 2020, I had eight products in that category. So I had seven concealers and one color corrector. And now we are looking at six in that category. So one is still the same color corrector. And then I have five concealers. Now I finished off two concealers, one at the very, very end of 2020 and one only very recently in my Partners in Cream Project Pan. I'm currently working on trying to use up maybe one or two of those concealers and I feel like my concealer collection is pretty much perfect right now. I don't have like my tried and true absolute favorite concealer in my collection currently but with the number that I have and the variety of different colors and finishes that I have I do feel very happy with where it stands and that's why I haven't brought any new ones into my collection in 2020. One, 2021. I don't want to bring something new in and overlook what I already own. So I'm just going to keep it within what I already had and probably not acquire much more. I do, I do receive PR and that's something that I should have probably said in the introduction. I do receive PR. So these numbers can fluctuate for sure. Just given that if there's a formula or a brand that I'm super interested in and I would like to share them with you, then I, I could see these numbers going up in the future but I don't intend to purchase anything personally myself because I'm really happy with where it stands and I just don't want this to get out of hand. Next category I have is loose powder. So at the end of 2020, I had six loose powders in my collection and I'm now sitting at only four loose powders and that is still too many for me. <laughs> I don't really use that much powder because I generally only really like to set underneath my eyes. I don't tend to find I need to set anywhere else on my face. So four loose powders for that one very specific purpose is a little bit much. I'd like to work my way through a couple of those, maybe bring that down to one or two because I don't feel like I absolutely need variety in that category. It, as long as it does the trick and it actually sets things into place and my concealer stays locked in and doesn't end up creasing too severely, why do I need four? Why? I don't know. And in addition to having four loose powders, even though that is my preference, I still own pressed powders as well. I had three at the end of 2020 and I have the exact same three right now. I think actually across the board throughout doing all of my inventories, I've only had the same three. <laughs> I just don't tend to use up pressed powders anymore. I used to back in the day because I had very oily skin and I had a lot of act active acne and I felt like it just kind of would help minimize the look of texture when I wore a lot of powder. But these days, I'm not really a powder person and I need to work through some of those because they're getting older in my collection, but I'm just not motivated to really reach for pressed powders. So the three that I have are probably going to be the same three that I have at the end of this year. If not, maybe I'll bring it down to two, but pressed powder for me is just kind of like one of those categories that at one point I probably would have been okay with having like five or six of them because I use them so often and I was actually able to work through them. But now, I don't have much need for them. Next category is setting spray. At the end of last year, I had five in my collection and that's a pretty reasonable number. There's nothing wrong with having five, especially if there's a variety of different types of setting sprays. 
I'm currently sitting at only four in my collection because I did use up one. I have, or no, I finished up two actually and I brought in one which I did receive in PR and I'm totally cool with four. I was totally cool with five and four for me is pretty good. I have a good balance of different types of setting sprays in my collection. Two are more like fixing sprays that really lock things into place. And two of them are more like a priming spray, glowy kind of spray. And so it's a really good balance. And honestly, if that number kind of sat around three to five, I'd be totally cool. No problems at all there. So onto mascara, I previously had four mascaras, which is totally a reasonable number for me. Mascara is something that I know that I'm going to use up in time. So four for me didn't feel that bad, but now I'm sitting on a collection that has grown. I have six mascaras, three of which are unopened in my collection. And one of them that is unopened was new to me at the end of last year and I still haven't gotten around to using it because I used to rotate through like four or five mascaras so I wouldn't actually probably use them up in their entirety. They would get to this point where they would dry up and they'd start getting crumbly and I wouldn't be able to use the product in its entirety. And my mindset has kind of shifted now where I want to be able to actually use up every last possible drop of my mascara and so I'm really sitting on things that are unopened because I don't want that to pull from my attention and to allow the other ones to go bad, if that makes any sense. <laughs> my brain, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that didn't make any sense, but six is a bit steep. If I was at four, I'd be really happy right now. Six, I don't feel is, you know, terrible because as I said, I will eventually get around to using them up but there's no point in having that many extras kicking around when I could just run to the drugstore and grab one at any point. And yeah, there's just no need. There's been a shift and six does feel a little bit high, although it's not really the end of the world by any means. Like six is not, not terrible. It's just a really good eye opener for me that I kind of want to keep it around that four mark. So let's just talk about brows. I lump everything all together in this category. So pomades, brow gels, brow powders, and brow pencils, they all live in the same category for me. So at the end of last year, I had five products in that category. I actually am sitting at still the exact same number. However, I have finished off two brow products. One was a brow marker and one was a brow gel. And I have brought in two new brow gels this past year through PR. So I'm still sitting at five and I think that's great. That is a really good, you know, collection for me because it does offer me a little bit of variety, but it's nothing too excessive. And that's the reason why I don't tend to break up this category because I only have one brow pomade, which they take forever to use up there. <laughs> I could have just one brow pomade in that category and it would last me for an eternity. But if I was to break it up and say, oh, I only have one brow pomade and I only have four brow gels, well, then I would feel like I have this room possibly to bring in a brow pencil or a brow marker or a brow powder and those would be outside of that category and so it wouldn't feel that bad and the numbers would be lower in each of those independent categories as well. And I just don't want it to get out of hand for me. So five brow products altogether, four brow gels, one pomade. I have no need for brow pencils or brow markers really in my life. So I mean, maybe a brow marker, but definitely not brow pencils. I just don't really feel like they're essential for me personally. And brow powders definitely don't have any sort of need for because I can always just use eyeshadow for that category. So I'm happy with where it stands. So now we're going to get into the colored complexion products and I break these up by powder and then by liquid and cream formulas. So for bronzer, let's talk about that. I lump together bronzer and contour just because I'm not really one to contour or accumulate any sort of contouring products. And back at the end of last year, I had seven products in that category. I love bronzer. Seven is so beyond reasonable. I always thought that I had more before I started doing my makeup inventories because I love bronzer. But seven is where I was at now. Now, however, I'm up to nine. I have nine bronzers in my collection now. And, you know, 
I was way happier when I heard the number seven than now that I have nine. I have brought in two new powder bronzers this year. Um, so eight bronzers, one contour is really where it's at, but two of them, I did get those in PR. Nine bronzers is quite a lot. I am currently working on trying to use one up and that shouldn't be a problem to get used up, you know, by the end of the year check-in. That would bring me down to eight. There's none that I can think of that I'd want to declutter immediately, but possibly in time, there's some that I might want to declutter. Um, but you know what? As long as that number kind of lives around and under that mark of 10, that's all right, because that gives me more than enough variety. And I think that's okay. It just kind of was a bit of a shock when I realized that it had gone up too because I'm not purchasing makeup right now. I'm glad I checked in on this, honestly, because it could have gotten to the point where I had like 10 or 11 by the end of this year and I would have I would have been shocked. Now for liquid and cream bronzer, at the end of last year, I had two, one of which was the milk cream bronzer. And then the other is actually a concealer that I purchased in a shade that is more of a bronzer kind of color slash a foundation deepening kind of shade for me. So that I've always just put in this bronzer category because I can't use it as an actual dedicated concealer. So in that category last year, I had those two products. I now have three, that's not bad. I'm okay with that. Even though the ones that I already owned are taking me forever to use up. Three is kind of where I want to keep that number. I don't really want to exceed that too far. Like five would be okay-ish, although absolutely far from necessary. So three is good. I've consistently kept it at two in 2019, 2020, and then this year it's up to three. And so, you know what? I'm not ever getting out of hand with that category and that feels good. Like I'm feeling like that's totally okay for me personally. Let's talk about the blush pan. So again, this is the powder or panned products in that category. And then we'll talk about cream and liquid blushes after that. But at the end of last year, I had a total of seven products in this category. And I'm, I like blush, but I've never considered myself to be like a big blush person. I don't even tend to really look at blush that often. Like I just don't. It's not something that intrigues me all that much. However, I have actually increased that number up to nine. So same with the bronzers, I've gone up nine. However, however, this is a little different because I only received one blush as a new product to my collection. The other one, that ninth blush in there is actually a product that I ended up recategorizing, recategorizing from my collection because it was a single shadow that I never reached for or ever used as an actual dedicated eyeshadow. It's that gorgeous, gorgeous orange shade from number seven. And it is a little bit more sheer in pigmentation. It doesn't have like this hyper metallic kind of feel or creaminess to it. And it's in its own individual kind of packaging. So I ended up just moving that into my blush collection in my makeup storage. And I just feel like it's way better suited to that category. It's going to get so much more love when I see it alongside my blushes than when I had it kind of piled in with my single eyeshadows where I oftentimes overlooked it or couldn't be bothered to reach into it. So only one new blush in my collection in the last seven months. And then one thing that I have actually just shifted over into a new category, you'll see that actually upcoming with a lot more of these color products. I have kind of recategorized some things and it, it just feels right. It honestly just feels right. I feel better about it. And knowing that that number is still sitting under nine is, or under 10 is good. Nine is probably the maximum where I'd like to see my blushes. It, it could be far worse <laughs> for sure. For me, for me personally, just because a number seems high to me doesn't mean that it's like, gotta be that low in your own collection. Like if you love blush and you have 35 blushes and you love them and you use them, and even if you don't use them and you love having them, you love having the variety, good for you, you do you. I am not at all affected by that decision or choice because this is just what works for me personally. Me only, I'm not thinking about anyone else's collection or the way that they choose to consume or use makeup. This is just what works for me. And so when I look at the blushes, I think 
nine is kind of that max that I want, but I'm happy to see that number still under 10. It's consistently stayed around the same sort of area. I don't imagine myself being able to use up any of the blushes that I currently have in my collection, except perhaps that Milani Luminoso. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sold that I'm going to finish it, although some of you do seem to think that I'll be able to actually use it up. So maybe there will be one less in this category, but I don't want to see this go to like 10 or 11 or 12 by the end of this year, but I'm okay with where it's at for sure. I was very convoluted, wasn't it? I, I do apologize. <laughs> so in addition to having those panned products, there is a category here for liquid and cream blushes. And at the end of last year, I had four products in that category. I now have doubled that number to eight. Two are lipsticks. So one was a liquid lip and one was a bullet lipstick that I've actually just moved over into this category because I don't, I don't ever use them on my lips. So I've moved them into my liquid and cream blushes. So that is actually like six actually categorized as liquid and cream blushes that I own. So eight products in total, but I have brought two in through PR and then I've not used up any in this category. I don't imagine myself using up any in this category anytime soon. Although that number is double what it was only seven months ago, I don't feel terrible about it. And in fact, I still feel like I could acquire more and not feel super overwhelmed because I've just been like on a blush kick when it comes to liquid and cream blushes. I love the way that they look on the skin and feel on the skin and that healthy, natural kind of glow that they can give depending on the formula. And I just don't feel like if that number was to go higher that it would be a terrible thing. As much as most of these things, I like to keep them under that 10 kind of number. Something about blush, man, I don't mind. And I can always use my lipsticks, which I have recategorized a couple of them into this collection as cream blushes, but there are still some colors that I don't have in my lipstick collection that I do think could be things that I'd like to play around with. So I'm not going out and just buying a ton of cream blushes. I'm currently on a no buy. And I didn't purchase any in the month of May when I was able to purchase blushes or any product really. I didn't end up buying any because I don't feel an immediate need for that, but you know what? By the end of this year, when I'm purchasing in November, I may, I may buy a few more. We will see. I'm gonna keep playing around with what I have, of course. All right, so moving into highlighters, I actually have one category for highlighter palettes. I didn't have that in 2019, but I added it into my inventory back in 2020 because that was a number that had grown. So last year I had three highlighter palettes in my collection. Previous to that, I actually just had one. That's why I decided to bring this into its own category. But now I have still three, the same three as last year. I haven't purchased any new highlighter palettes. I haven't brought in any new highlighter palettes. Are brands even releasing highlighter palettes anymore? I don't think so. So I have three, I'm totally okay with that number. In fact, I may decide to declutter one of them. The, uh, I, I wish I loved it more, but I don't love the Shared Planet highlighter palette because of the types of tones and colors that they have in it. And I never find myself reaching for it. Like literally never. I have, I see it in my drawer all the time and I just never feel compelled to reach for it. So that might be something that I end up decluttering. I'm not sure at this point, but three is fine. Three highlighter palettes is fine. So in addition to having those three highlighter palettes, I do have single pans of highlighter as well. And since the beginning of taking my inventory, I have counted my ColourPop Super Shock Cheeks as individual pans of highlighter. So I have been just keeping it that way, even though technically now I would probably put them in the cream category. I just wanna keep with making sure that the numbers stay as consistent as possible and that I'm not like recategorizing too many things just to see numbers kind of shift. So in any case, the number of highlighter pants that I had back at the end of last year that were outside of palettes is 14. So I had 14 individually packaged highlighters or highlighters that are in like duos or trio kind of products and now I have 15. So I haven't 
um, used up any of my highlighters. I have brought in one and that's a Mob Beauty one as well. No, wait, wait, I'm lying to you. I've acquired two highlighters this year. So have I finished off a highlighter? Wait, now I'm having a moment. I had to just look at the previous pictures to kind of figure this out because I was like, wait, no, I have gotten two highlighters this year. One was from Veska in addition to that Mob Beauty one. Now, the reason why this number has only gone up one is because I ended up decluttering one. The Becca, I had an Opal Mini that I had gotten as a point perk from Sephora forever ago. I ended up decluttering that and passing that off to my sister. And that's why that number is now sitting at only one higher instead of two higher. I had to get that like <laughs> figured out in my head. But yeah, 15 still is a very high number. I also have some liquid highlighters in my collection too. And in that category at the end of last year, I had five products and I'm currently sitting at five in that category as well. I did finish up one liquid highlighter earlier this year. It was the Becca one, but I have since brought in the Alma Beauty Stick. We're still sitting at five products. That's totally reasonable. That's completely fine. I see myself being able to use up a couple of what I have in my collection currently pretty easily and Eventually, I do really want to get the Auric Glow Lust, the Samantha Ravindahl release that she came up with at the beginning of this year. I still have not been able to purchase that because it was sold out when I was off of my no-buy. And honestly, if they come into stock while I'm technically on a no-buy, I'm still probably going to buy one of those. So yeah, that'd be fine if that number goes up to six, but I can see it going or staying at five rather, um, because I'm pretty close to using up the Josie Marin mini one that I have as well. So last year I had a category for lip primer. I had one in that category last year and now I'm down to zero. So that category is completely irrelevant. I decided to declutter the e.l.f. lip primer that I had because I never reached for it. I didn't care for it. I didn't really see the point of it. So I got rid of it and I don't see the point of adding any new products into that category. It's just kind of a bit of a gimmicky category in my opinion. It doesn't seem to do anything for me at least. Um, I don't see the benefit of having that. So moving into lip liners, last year I had four at the end of last year and that's totally reasonable. That's a completely okay number to have. And in fact, I'm sitting at the exact same number, which is four, I have the same four lip liners in my collection. I've not brought in any new lip liners. I've not even thought about bringing in any new lip liners to my collection. It's just not a category that excites or intrigues me. And yeah, I haven't used up any either. Don't foresee myself being able to use up any of the ones that I have by the end of this year. And yeah, I'm totally cool with that number. It, it's a category I don't even think about oftentimes, to be honest. So four is, four is fine. Now, when it comes to lip gloss and tinted lip balm, so these, is, these are basically any sort of like sheer, balmy, glossy lip oil kind of product. At the end of last year, I had 11 products in this category. If you watch it back though, three of those, or maybe two, I can't remember the exact number, but some of them were in blister packs. And so those were relatively easy to work my way through at the beginning of this year. Now that um, we're at the mid-year check-in, I'm actually up to 10 products in this category, even though I have used off a couple from my collection. I know I used up a full-size lip gloss this year and then those minis that were in the blister packs, but I've brought in a fair amount of lip glosses this year through PR. 10 feels okay. It feels like the top of where I'd kind of like to see that category, but if I'm being realistic with myself, like I could see that number going up to something like 12 or 13 and being okay with it because I do work my way through my tinted lip balms and lip oils. They just are the kind of category that I actually work through. So I can see it going up a little bit and being all right. But for now, I'm really happy with where it's at. And I don't foresee myself feeling any sort of need or desire to increase that number. So we're good. We are good. I did also declutter a few lip gloss kind of products from my collection when I did my lip product declutter. I believe that was at the beginning of May. So um, these next few categories have 
fluctuated quite a bit thanks to doing that declutter. I got rid of some things that weren't really suited to my taste. I got rid of some items that had expired and things that just weren't really serving me anymore have been eliminated from my collection. And so that's also in part why that number is sitting at 10, even though I have brought in quite a few through PR. I believe I brought in four new ones this year. And so that number doesn't seem to reflect that, but that's because I have decluttered and used up a few and it feels okay. I'm totally cool with seeing that number at 10 and it would be okay to see that number go up as well. And then moving into liquid lipstick, this is where you see a huge difference. So I had eight last year. Actually, I haven't been talking about every single category as it stood in the past, but in 2019, previous to having eight, I had 16. So I had 16 liquid lipsticks, went down to eight, and now seven months later, I actually only have two because I have decluttered six. I got rid of so many of my liquid lipsticks because they have just gotten dry and crusty or they ended up shearing out and they just became like a weird texture. And I just am not a liquid lipstick person anymore. But when I talk about these products and I think about um, setting goals for myself, it really is a good reminder to remember like, that was a category I used to love and 16 at one point probably wasn't even enough. I wanted like 20, 25. And now that I have two, I'm like, okay, I could do without probably both of those as well. But the two that I have are colors that I do enjoy and formulas that are still good. One of them is actually relatively newer compared to the rest of my collection. And yeah, two is, two is plenty. <laughs> it offers me the variety that I need for, you know, something that's a little bit more long lasting and maybe a little bit more impactful, but I don't need much more than I have there. So that's good. Now looking at bullet lipsticks, again, this was severely affected by that declutter. Last year I had 35 products in that category and now I'm down to 20, 20, li uh, not liquid, 20 bullet lipsticks, I think is still more variety than one face really needs or like my face really needs. If you have more than 20 lip lipsticks in your collection, you do you, but 20 is more than I need for sure, but I can't seem to part with any of the ones that I have. And I, I do feel like I have a decent variety. I have all different types of colors and undertones, and I have a lipstick that can work for any occasion. I don't feel any sort of urgency to purchase any new ones. Honestly, whenever I see new lipsticks being released, I kind of realize in my head, like I already have that. I already have something like that. New lip launches haven't really appealed to me because I do think that nudes and natural colors are kind of the current trend. So when I see new releases that are kind of those colors that I already have within my collection, it just doesn't really intrigue me at all. I don't feel like I need more variety than I have. Let's move into eyeshadow primer. So I had five of these at the end of last year and I'm currently sitting on a collection of three. And I think that's good because I have a regular eyeshadow primer there. I have a glitter eyeshadow primer and then I have a like tinted base kind of product, the e.l.f. one. That I probably should have had in my liquid eyeshadow category in the past, but I didn't. So I didn't want to like shift it around. But in any case, three kind of like eyeshadow based products are totally fine. They're all kind of just like workhorse kind of products for me that are more utilitarian than anything else. And that's fine. I don't, again, this is not one of those categories where I'm like excited to try a new one. Moving into the like liquid cream eyeshadows as well as glitter shadows. They're there were some glitter shadows in my collection in the past, but now I don't tend to have that category, but I kind of just lump them all together because they all serve the same sort of purpose, including like a shadow stick kind of formula. So at the end of last year, I had nine products in that category, and now I currently have eight. I did use up one liquid eyeshadow at the very beginning of this year, which was amazing. And I did declutter one because it just wasn't, wasn't jiving with me. So that number eight is fine, but I don't, I don't intend to bring any more products in that category into my collection because cream shadows, I do find I have a bit of a struggle with having hooded eyes. I don't tend to love the way that they perform for me. 
and liquid eyeshadows, I just feel like they are very novel. So I really do enjoy the way that they look and they, the way that they feel. They have so much impact. They're really exciting but they're the kind of product that I'm never gonna be able to use up before letting them go bad. We'll see, that number could fluctuate a little bit. I may end up being able to finally finish off one more from that collection. We'll see. Eight is fine though. I'm okay with that, but I can see that going down and not feeling like I'm missing out by having fewer liquid shadows than that. And then let's get into the liquid and gel eyeliners. I used to have one gel liner, but now I don't have any, so we'll just preface it with that. So at the end of last year, I had two products in this category and I actually still have the exact same two products in this category. One is a brown liquid liner and one is a black liquid liner. No gel liners have been in my collection, I don't believe for like a year and a half at this point. So yep, pretty boring. <laughs> I haven't even finished off a liquid liner that I've had in my collection for like two years at this point, maybe even a little bit longer, the Fenty one. So I gotta work my way through that. I'm just not a liquid liner person. It's too much hassle for what it's worth. Like my eyes don't even end up showing it. They just hide liquid liners. And it just is impossible for me to get matching wings. I used to love a liquid liner look, but nowadays I just love, I love me some eyeshadow. So yeah. Two is totally fine, and it might end up going down to one, one day. So let's talk pencil liners. I do really like this category. This is something that I don't really have any sort of like goal numbers for, because for me, it's if I'm drawn to a color, I probably will like to acquire it. Like, let's just be honest. If it's something that I think would be really fun and eye-opening in my waterline, then I'm I'm totally into it. I just tend to prefer them so much more than like a liquid liner or even using an eyeshadow as a liner, just that does not cooperate with my eyes. So a gel in a stick form, like in a pencil form is where it's at for me. I tend to prefer sharpenable eyeliners as well, but that is so beyond the point. Look, okay, let's get back to what we were talking about. So at the end of last year, I had eight products in this category. I'm currently sitting at eight, although they are not the exact same eight. I have decluttered two of the ColourPop ones that I had previously. I have come to despise the ColourPop creme gel liners. They tend to dry up so fast and break, and they're just not, not there for the longevity, you know? I want an eyeliner that's gonna be with me long term, not only in my waterline, but just like physically here with me. So I have brought in two additional eyeliners this year so far, and they're both greens, which is just hilarious because that's so me. So I have two new green eyeliners in my collection, but we're still living at the eight, number eight and I'm totally fine with that. Now we're getting into the juicy, the last two juicy categories here. So let's talk eyeshadow singles. When I first started doing my makeup inventory, singles were not really a big part of my like of my collection, except ColourPop Super Shock Shadows, which I've kind of started phasing out of my collection. I haven't acquired many of them in the last few years, um, but they took up a big portion of this category. So I started with 41 and the end of 2019, and then I went up to 61 at the end of 2020. And that's because I didn't really acquire that many more single shadows, but I had depotted all of my ColourPop pressed powder shadow palettes. And so that brought that number up pretty significantly because, you know, those are generally 12 pan palettes and I had depotted all of them and considered them and moved them into my singles category. So 61 is where I was at at the end of last year. And now I'm at 79 single eyeshadows, which is wild to realize it went up by 18 products. So 79 is like probably the maximum I'd like to see that category at. I may have to go through and declutter a couple of my actual like magnetic singles because I do want to eventually bring in more from more indie brands, more special kind of eyeshadows. But for now it is what it is. 79 is where it's at right now. And I'm not too keen on that number, but I can understand why it is so high and it's okay. Sorry if things have kind of shifted. I have talked so much that my camera battery ended up dying. Uh, so we're here with the second battery trying to finish it off and we're only 
we just have to talk about the last category here. So the final category that I have to share with you is my eyeshadow palettes. At the end of last year, I had 21 eyeshadow palettes in my collection and I was really happy with that number. I thought it was perfect. I had just added the Metropolis palette to my collection and I was like, I don't need any more eyeshadow palettes. And I'm happy to report that I haven't actually acquired any new ones. I'm sitting at 20 eyeshadow palettes now. The one that's different is I ended up decluttering the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette after I did my Pan That Palette kind of adventure for last year. So I'm really happy with that number. 20 is the like perfect eyeshadow palette count for me personally. There are a couple that are starting to get a little bit older that I may end up having to declutter at some point soon. Um, but I don't foresee myself just immediately replacing them with something else. I love playing with eyeshadow, but I feel like I have so much variety within this, especially considering that in my singles palettes, um, I actually have four ColourPop pressed powder palettes all decanted into singles now. So I mean, that really is like 24 eyeshadow palettes right there alone. So I have more than enough variety. I have more than enough when it comes to textures and different colors and finishes. And I'm happy. I'm really happy with my collection as it stands for my eyeshadows specifically. I feel like we're in a really good spot where I've not really wanted anything new and not craved anything new, but felt really, really happy with it. So yeah, that is all of the categories. I know that was a lot to talk about, but let's just talk about the total number of products that I have in my collection. So at the end of last year, I had a grand total of 259 products. So that was the add up of like palettes with singles and liquid versus cream and powder in all categories. Now I have 255 products in my collection. So even though some of those numbers have gone up, some of them have gone down significantly enough that I actually have four fewer products in total altogether in my collection, which is so good because back in 2019, I had 291 products in my collection and I brought it down from there pretty significantly. I'm really happy with that. I'm always, you know, bringing in new things, but I'm always rotating through and trying to use up items for my collection as well. And I'm pretty good about not decluttering to an extreme, but that lip product declutter that I did earlier, just about a month and a half ago, it made me feel so good to just reset and just start over. And I have no desire to accumulate more just because I did get rid of so many. I have no desire to replace the ones I got rid of. And I'm feeling really happy as a whole, knowing that my collection is sitting at 255 products and a lot of these categories are looking really good. It's just a very personal experience to talk about makeup numbers. And I will never judge anyone for having, you know, more or less makeup than me. This is just what works for me and I'm happy to check in with myself and share this with you because I know this is something that me as a YouTube viewer, I'm just genuinely interested in what works for other people and how they have chosen to, you know, consume makeup for themselves and what numbers seem okay for them. But this is a very personal experience. So please don't feel like I'm judging you at all if you have more or if you have less. Don't feel like I'm trying to preach that this is the way that your collection should look because it's not an ideal collection for me always. As I said many times in this video, my preferences do change on occasion. The ways that I, you know, think about these different categories changes over time based on what I'm liking in that exact moment. So I don't think that this is an ideal collection ever. It's always gonna be fluctuating. It's always gonna be changing. My preferences are gonna be changing. So yeah, I'm happy with where it is, but I might be happy with seeing these numbers increase in a few years. I might be really upset with these numbers in a few years, who knows? You know, it's always changing, it's always growing and adapting. But that is everything for today's video. Thank you for watching. I'm sure this was a doozy. There's a lot I have uh, talked for quite some time, but yeah, that is everything. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.